Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture in the ultrasound physics and we are talking about the ultrasound beam sometimes it's called the unfocused beam the unfocused beam usually is coming from a single element transducer single element transducer is usually the source of the unfocused beam how come an unfocused beam has a focus and as if you look at here this is the single element transducer it has one one trans one unit one element and it emits this sound beam and as you see here there is a narrowing in the ultrasound beam and this is called focus so how can we call it unfocused while there is a focus this focus is a natural focus is a native focus in the ultrasound beam and it is not inflicted or not made by humans so there is no artificial focusing here that's why you call it unfocused okay this unfocused beam has an hourglass shape uh, configuration so it has a wide narrow wide uh, diameter so we have it starts by wide and then comes in a narrowing and then goes back into a wider diameters okay so that's why we call it hourglass and this hourglass shape has a focus and this is a natural focus so why this ultrasound beam does doesn't go in straight cylindrical beam like uh, configuration why it has this hourglass shape and there is a uh, native focus so this been explained by a, a scientist of an Austrian scientist named Huygens and Huygens postulated that there are multiple many of these multiple Huygens sources that are present within the element the ultrasound transducer element and in the meantime it's emitting um, wavelets or these wavelets called Huygens wavelets and these wavelets they interfere to each other they, in the form of in phase and out of phase making constructive and destructive interference ending up by this uh, hourglass shape ultrasound beam which is uh, having a focus and uh, in the near zone as we will see there is convergence and in the far zone we will have a divergence so if we study this ultrasound beam now we know that this ultrasound beam has a focal point here it's a natural one it's not artificial and we have here a single element transducer so this uh, this ultrasound beam when studied the with the dissected or go to its anatomy we found three zones the first zone from the beginning of the ultrasound transducer surface here to the narrowest point of the ultrasound beam which is the focal point and we call this the near zone or sometimes called the uh, fresnel zone and then we have a focal zone which is this area it's around the focus and it's few centimeter like one or two centimeter uh, proximal and one two centimeter distal to the focal point and this is the uh, usually this is the narrowest zone in the whole ultrasound beam and that's why I call it the focal zone and then the third zone is starting from the focal point all the way to the end of the sound beam as it goes in the medium till it ends by uh, uh, by a, a, a process of attenuation so we get the end of the ultrasound beam so from the focal point here to the end of the ultrasound beam this is called the far zone and sometimes called the Fraunhofer zone and is characterized by divergence so we have here convergence zone diversion zone or Fresnel zone and Fraunhofer zone or near zone and uh, far zone and we have in the middle we have the focal zone here so how many zones we have three zones right we also noticed that the unfocused sound beam has two lengths to, to mention first length is the near zone length this is the near zone right this area so this area has a length and this is called the near zone length and also it also called the focal length or the focal depth so from here to here from here to here this is the near zone length or the focal length okay 
in mention this, we have to mention something about what you call the F number. Sometimes you have this in the question in the exams. What is the F number? <clears throat> Sometimes it's called the vocal ratio or the F ratio or the F stop. These are all the same for the focal number or F number. Okay, is the ratio between the focal length here and the diameter of the element. So this one here, as we'll see later on, this diameter is given the letter Z, uh, letter D, as a, uh, as a symbol. So we have here D, and this is the focal length. So we ratio this to this, we get the F number. All right. So what is the, another? Uh, uh, length we will we'll talk about is the double near zone length, which is here. Imagine that this, if I say that this is 10 centimeter, assuming that it's 10 centimeter, so the double the near zone length we have 20 centimeter. Is it the end of the beam? No, the, the beam continues all the way to the end, but at the depth of double the near zone length here, there is an event that we'll talk about in a moment now. So we have here the near zone length and the double near zone length here, right? Near zone length is uh, related to what we call the F number, and this is the ratio between the F, the near zone length or the focal length compared to the diameter of the ultrasound beam. Now we come to the diameters as we mentioned earlier. So uh, we, we summarize, we have zones, three zones, we have two lengths, and we have three diameters. <clears throat> what are these three diameters? We have the diameter at the beginning. So this is here, the beginning of the, of the ultrasound beam. We have the diameter, and they found that it's exactly the same as the diameter of the uh, active element. Okay. So if I give this D for diameter, the beginning of the ultrasound beam it starts with diameter D also the same, right? And then. We have here the diameter at the natural focus, or then this is a native or a natural focus, and they found that the diameter here is half of the beginning of the ultrasound beam. So we get here half D. So this is D, and here we have half D. So it's half in diameter because of the what? There is convergence, right? And then start from this point to have divergence. So the ultrasound beam goes in divergence till the level here, which is double near zone length. At this level, they found that the diameter here is the same as the diameter of the ultrasound beam starting diameter. So as we see here, we have two diameters are the same. Okay, both are equal to the diameter of the, of the ultrasound element or the PZT here. And we have a diameter in the middle, exactly in the middle, which is half the diameter D. What happened to the ultrasound beam after the diameter here becomes D? seem like the ultrasound transducer element. Okay, what happened? It continues in divergence, so it doesn't stop here. It goes beyond this point, we get more divergence, more divergence, more divergence. So I, let, let me assume that this is here, the diameter D is, let's say, uh, half a centimeter. So the diameter here in the beginning of the ultrasound beam will be uh, half a centimeter. Here will be one quarter of a centimeter, and then at double zone length, we'll get another half a centimeter, and then the, the beam continues more and more diversion. So it, at a point, it might reach to one centimeter, okay? So uh, we, we can predict that beyond this level, the ultrasound beam goes further in divergence and it gets wider and wider in the diameter of the ultrasound beam beyond this depth, which is the double zone length. <clears throat> So what happened at the focus? The focus is the narrowest diameter and the smallest cross-sectional area, of course. This is the diameter, the, the focal point, right? So this is representing the best lateral resolution. We know that the lateral resolution is related to what? To the diameter of the beam. So at this point, we get the best lateral resolution. And in the meantime, we have the highest of the intensity. Why? Because the intensity is what? The power coming from the transducer divided by the area. So here the cross-sectional area is white. We have here cross-sectional area narrow. So as we come here, the, the, the intensity is the highest intensity happen at this level of the focal point. We just 
came across the word that we have the diameter of the element, the diameter of the element here. What is the diameter of the element? If this is a single element, okay, we have one element in the transducer. This is the actual diameter of this element. Usually this element here, it looks like a coin or a circular. So the diameter of this element here is the, is the same as what we call the D diameter of the ultrasound beam, the beginning, right? Okay. What if I'm having array transducer? And this is most of the transducer we're using nowadays are the array type. So if I apply this to the array transducers, array means it's formed of many, many uh, elements. Okay, so this is the array transducer. Okay. If I have this, <coughs> excuse me, if I have this array transducer, how can I apply the word element diameter? Element diameter here is what? It's sometimes called the aperture. Okay, or the effective transducer width. Why you call it effective? Because this is the only part of the element that has been activated at this moment of time. So this is the diameter here, and this is called the aperture, sometimes called the aperture, or the effective transducer width, or the effective transducer diameter, or the group of adjacent, they are near to each other, that's why I call it adjacent, group of adjacent activated elements. So. How about the rest of the elements here? The red ones are not activated. The, the blue ones here are activated. That's why this is the, the, the part of the transducer that we can call it the diameter. The diameter is the aperture here. So what is the aperture? This number of elements adjacent to each other that are activated, these are the active element or the diameter of the element. How about the rest of the transducer? If it's not activated, not the, the elements here are not firing sound uh, sound pulses, so they are not active, so the diameter only, this one is the considered to be the effective diameter, all right? What if I'm having now changes, if you have changes in the transducer, what will be the effect over the ultrasound beam and its diameters and its focal lengths and so forth? So what will happen here? Assume that this is the ultrasound transducer here. Assume that we use a higher frequency element. High frequency means what? It's a thin element, right? A higher. Or, so we have a higher frequency or wider diameter. So the, the, the D here diameter will be wider. What will happen? So increase frequency, increase diameter, what will happen? The focal length or the nearsal length becomes increased. So I'm having here a deeper, focal point. The focal point goes deeper in the ultrasound beam. So it doesn't go as it used to be here. No, it goes like here. So we get the focal point goes deeper, right? Okay. And because of what? Either we have a higher frequency or a wider diameter. Higher frequency or wider diameter, I get deeper focal point. What else? In the same configuration here, you can see that the divergence pattern in the far zone or the far field is not as it's supposed to be. It becomes narrower. So divergence is less. So we have here less divergence, deeper focus. If I'm having high frequency, high diameter, increased frequency diameter, I get increased focal length and lowering the, the, the convergence, uh, sorry, the divergence, right? So there is increase of focal length and decrease of divergence. So what will happen if I'm having the opposite? I get the diameter smaller of the, of the transducer, the element, the active element is smaller, or I'm using a lower frequency element. So lower frequency means it's a thicker element. You know that, right? So we get a lower frequency or a lower diameter, what will happen? Lower focal depth, meaning that the focal depth here gets less, meaning that shallower. I don't mean here lower, meaning it goes deeper. No, I mean the distance is lower, so the, the focal point will be shallower here. So the focal depth is decreased, meaning that the point, the focal point goes shallower, while the divergence is increased, the, the far field, the beam goes very wide. And this is the reason why, guys, if we have uh, uh, in the scanning and you get 
to put the focal point, okay? We need to put the focal point at the level of the organ we are scanning, okay? Or a little bit just at the edge, but not higher, Why not shallower. Why? Because of the focal point, if I imagine that this is the area I'm scanning, and I put the focal point too shallow here. What will happen? The area I'm scanning will be in the area where there is more divergence, and this will degrade the lateral resolution, of course. So the far field here, we have more divergence, okay? I will get very bad lateral resolution, right? Okay, guys? Yeah. So uh, that, that's why if we have lower frequency, guys, lower frequency, try not to put the focal point more shallower than the organ you are scanning, okay? Make the focal point at the area of your organ you're scanning. So this is the organ you're scanning, for example, the gallbladder or the uh, pancreas or whatever, okay? Don't put the focal point shallower, okay? Why? Because if I put it shallower, the organ I'm scanning will be here in the area of divergence. I will get very bad lateral resolution. I will degrade the spatial resolution too. That's why it's better to have what? It's better to have the focal point exactly at the organ I am scanning because this is the narrowest point and will give me the best lateral resolution. Thank you, and I hope this will be beneficial for you guys. See you later. Bye.